So a developer product can be purchased over and over again, unlike a game pass, which can only be purchased once. To create one, you firstly have to publish your game. So go to File, Publish to Roblox As, or press Control Shift P to get that published. And then if you go to Game Settings at the top here, you go to Monetization, you can then see this tab here for developer products. Now you can also access your developer products at create.roblox.com. If you select your game, there's a tab on the left side, which lets you do the exact same thing as what we're going to do here. So I'm going to create a developer product. I'm going to click on the three dots, I'm going to click on edit and you can give it a name. So we'll just call it test product and we'll set a price of hundred Robux. Once we've done this, we can go back to game settings, scroll down, and you see we have a product ID. This identifies our specific developer product. So we're going to copy that using the three dots and clicking copy ID to clipboard. Alternatively, if you created yours on the website, you'll find the ID somewhere there, It'll probably be in the, in the URL or listed on the page. And then in a local script somewhere on the client, so it could be in the starter GUI, for example, we want to prompt the user to buy our product by saying marketplace service prompt product purchase. And we're using this specific function because it is for developer products. We specify the player that we want to prompt this to. Since it's on the client, it's going to be the local player. And then we also pass the product ID. And once we've done this, when we play our game, you'll see that we get prompted to purchase the developer product. Now, this is in Studio, therefore we're not going to be charged any Robux if we purchase this, but the same thing is going to happen as if we were to purchase this in a running game. Now, perhaps you'd want to prompt the player to purchase a developer product when they click on a button. Very simple. All you'd need to do is create a screen GUI, have a text button or an image button, and then you could have your code so that when the button is clicked using the mouse button one click event, we do the same thing here. We would just prompt them to buy the product. So we've just moved this code into an event so it will run rather than running when we first join the game, it will run when we click on the button. So that is the prompting side done. Now that we've bought the developer product, how do we actually give the user what they purchased. Now, of course, there are loads of different things you can do with developer products. I'm not here to show you how to make every single developer product under the sun. However, I will show you how to process a payment, right? Once the payment's gone through, how do you give them the goods, the deliverables? And to do that, we're gonna switch to a server script. Now, we've prompted the user to buy the product on the client. That's all we need to do over there but we actually want to now process it on the server. And it's always good to handle this stuff on the server because it's authoritative. It means the server has full control, can't be touched by exploiters. So we do all of this on the server when we're processing the payment. And to do that, we will say marketplace service dot process receipt. And this will allow us to call a function whenever a developer product has been purchased. And then in that function, we can work out which specific product has been purchased and we can run some specific code to execute the transaction and to give the deliverables for that specific product. So marketplace service dot process receipt equals function. And as part of this function, it will take an argument for the details of the developer product transaction. So we can call this whatever you like, but as per the Roblox docs, I'm just gonna call this receipt info, okay? And then this receipt info, we it will contain all of the information relating to the transaction that just happened. So it will contain the user ID of the player who purchased the developer product, so we can identify them. And it will also contain the developer product ID as well. And that's really all the information that we need because we now know which user bought the product and which product did they buy. Now that's not it. There's also some other information that gets sent to this process receipt function when we buy a developer product. You've got the currency spent, which is the price, currency type, the place ID where the purchase was made, the player ID, the product ID, and the purchase ID. So we want to get the user ID and the product ID. So we'll create a variable for the player who the player ID, and that will be receipt info dot player ID. 
and we also want the product ID, which is going to be receipt info dot product ID. And I just printed this to the output to show you all of this information. And then what you can do is you can say if product ID equals equals, and we'll just get our product ID that we made a couple of minutes ago. Just put it in there. We now can put any code in here inside this if statement, and that will run if our specific product has been purchased. So we can say test product has been purchased. Now let's just head back in and we will buy our developer product again. This is going to call the process receipt function and it's printed out that the test product has been purchased. Now, if we were to purchase a different developer product, this would not print because this is only going to print if our specific product has been purchased. And then you'll put your code in here to give the player what they've bought. This could be, for example, walk speed that might last for a couple of seconds. It might be additional currency. Uh, we will show you some examples very soon on how to do that, but we'll just assume we've, we've given them all of their stuff that they've purchased. That's all good. We now need to return a value from the process receipt to tell Roblox that it's all good. The, the, trans the transaction has successfully completed. We've given them everything they need. It's, it's all good. So we can just return enum dot product purchase decision dot purchase granted. And that just means we've given them everything they've bought and you don't have to worry about it anymore. The reason this exists is if for some reason the purchase didn't go through, maybe there was a Roblox uh, issue error that prevented us from processing the transaction, we would return not processed yet. And then that would mean the next time they join the game, we could um, make sure that that goes through and they are given what they paid for. But if we return purchase granted, it means, yep, all good. They've, they've got what they've purchased. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, so it's like a status code. So what we will then do is we need to make sure that the player is actually in the game, right? Because maybe they left just as they bought the product. So we can't give them their stuff, right? That would be a reason why the transaction might not go through because if they've left the game we can't get their character anymore so we will firstly look to see if the players in the game by saying game.players get player by user id and we'll put the player id in there and we'll say okay if player then and then we can well what we'll do is we'll put that in here there we go we'll put that in here because perhaps we need to firstly get the player if we want to give them walk speed, for example. And so if the player exists, then great. We'll, we'll have the code that adjusts their walk speed or adjusts their currency. However, if the player isn't there, then let's return not processed yet because obviously we can't process what they've purchased. Um, and I mean, it's most likely that you're going to need the player to exist anyway, right? To give any of their benefits. And that is pretty much it. That is how you process a developer product. But this could get quite messy because imagine we had 10 different developer products. We'd have to start doing loads of else ifs like this and we'd have to keep copying and pasting the same stuff here. So I'm gonna show you a better way of doing it, a, a, a pretty much how they do it on the Roblox documentations. So rather than having our code here, let's just put it at the bottom and just forget about it for a second. What we can do is we can actually have a table of our products and then for every single product we can index it in our table like this and we can set it to be a function and then we can have an argument for the player that bought it and we can put our code into this function and then we can return true or false depending on whether it went through just like this so if the player exists, we give them what they purchased, we return true to show that everything went well. Otherwise, if the player doesn't exist, let's return false. And you can do this for every product that you have. You know, you might have three products, so you can have three different functions. And in this function, you might give them their walk speed. In this function, you might give them even more walk speed. In this function, you might give them 100 cash. So all of your handling is done in this function because you've got the player and you know what the product ID is.
So you can do all of that stuff up there. And then rather than having this if statement that checks the product ID, and you might have to have three or four of them if you have multiple IDs, we can just get the function from this table by passing in the ID. So you could say products, if products, product ID, then because this value is going to be a function, we can just call that function by having a pair of brackets on the end or parentheses. And we put the player object that we've just gotten via get player by user ID as the argument, as the parameter to this function. And then we'll get the result, which gets returned because it will either return true or return false. And then we can say if result, then return enum dot product purchase decision dot purchase granted else return enum dot product purchase decision dot not processed yet and that will mean that we no longer have to have loads of code in in this function whenever we want to add a new developer product we just add a new entry to our table like this and we paste in the id we have the code that gives the product we're good to go so let me show you how to actually process some developer products. So for example, if the player has bought 100 cash, we could say player.leaderstats.cash.value plus or equals 100. And this would be for 100 cash. If you then had a product for 1000 cash, you would simply make another entry into the table and change the value here accordingly. Now we don't have a leader stats, so I'm going to pause the video and set one up for the purpose of this video. Okay, so I just created my leaderboard, very, very simple. And I'm gonna buy my test product. And if you watch the value here, it is increased by 100. And that's because, and I'll just buy it again, just to show you, now it's 200. And that's because when we buy the developer product, the process receipt function on the server gets called. We look up the product ID that we've created here. Uh, we look up the function for that product ID that we've put into our products table and obviously it exists. So we then call that function. We pass the player that bought it to the function and then the player exists, obviously. So we increment their cash value by 100 and we return true to show that the purchase went through. Now let me show you how you can make some changes to the player's character. For example, you might want to give them speed for 20 seconds where well, you can get their character by saying player.character and you might want to check that it firstly exists like this. If it does, you can then say player.character.humanoid.walkspeed equals 50. And then if you want it to wear off after 20 seconds, you can do a task.delay uh, and you could say uh, 20 seconds function player.character.humanoid.walkspeed equals 16 and that will set it back to default. Now the task.delay um, creates a separate thread so that it doesn't yield this function, it just does it in the background. And after five seconds, it will run this function. So it will uh, reset the player's character so uh, walk speed back to 16 after five seconds, but it won't yield the rest of the function from returning. So let me show this to you. If I go and purchase the developer product, you see I'm walking at normal speed right now. I purchase it, suddenly I'm walking fast, and then after the five seconds are up, I go back to normal speed. And if I want to, I can purchase it again because it's a developer product and it can be purchased over and over again. So that is how to create developer products on Roblox. I hope you found this uh, tutorial useful. If you did, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe. Let me know if you have any more videos you'd like me to make, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.